Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Beginning here on Heaven We're Thinking. Today we're continuing on in the burning bush story. We're continuing on in Exodus chapter 3 starting in verse 11. So I'll read it and we'll get right into today's topic. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. So here we're building upon the story that we started with the beginning of Exodus chapter 3, where Moses saw this burning bush. He was curious. He went to look. God told him to take the sandals off his feet for the place where he was standing was holy ground. And God said that he had seen the misery of his people. He'd heard their crying out. He was coming down to do something, and he was going to rescue them. But then he gave this great charge to Moses, this man who had ran away from his position in Egypt as a prince in Egypt, as an adopted prince, because he murdered someone, and then that was discovered, and it became a big issue, and he tried to cover it up, and he tried to run away, and all these things. He ran away and spent many, many years in this wilderness as God prepared him for this moment, even though he didn't know it. He had no idea this was coming. God was preparing him for something. And now we get to the moment that God prepared him, and he says, I'm sending you to do this, to lead my people out of Egypt. I don't know if you've ever thought about this. Put yourself in Moses' position, but think about God telling you or me, telling one of us that he is going to have us deliver an entire nation out of another nation. And a nation of slaves out of another nation. Imagine that, being tasked with this enormous, enormous task. And you, being a shepherd in this case, as Moses was here, what are you really going to do? You're, you're nothing special. You're not, you're not in this great position of power and authority. That would be all the kinds of excuses that you and I would say. We would say that we're not qualified. We can't do it. Maybe someone else would be a better choice. Uh, but God doesn't choose... Those types of people who we would say are perfectly qualified. He chooses unqualified people like you and me because no one is truly qualified for the work that God has for them. No one can do it. You can't do it on your own. You need Jesus. We need to rely on God. He will give us the strength because it's his strength that's going to get us through it. It's his guidance, his wisdom, his direction that's going to bring about the saving of his people in this story. And it's his guidance and his wisdom and his direction that's going to bring about whatever it is that he has ordained in each of our lives. We need to rely on him and stop making excuses for why we aren't qualified. Because again, we shouldn't be relying on our own strength. We need to rely on God. We need to rely on our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see that God says, I will be with you. This will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So backing up into verse 11, Moses had asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And this is God's response, that he is going to be with him. And that's often the case in our lives. When God tells us something and God tells us to do something and we feel overwhelmed and we go, how am I possibly going to do this? Often this is God's response to us. I will be with you. I will be with you. I'm the one who's going to do it. And then, more than that, he gives him a sign. He gives him something to look forward to. He gives him something to, to prove because Moses needs a little proof here. And, and as we see throughout the story of Moses, he is someone who constantly needs God to uh, prove himself, if you will, or to give him some kind of a sign. And I think that's like most of us. We often ask God for a sign. Did you really tell me this? Can you please show me that this really is of you? We should be seeking God. We should be seeking his direction. And often he gives us these signs to reinforce our faith, to reinforce our belief in him, because it's hard for us. It's hard for us to believe in a God that we can't always physically see, that we can't always see moving. And, and in this case, Moses, he, he wanted some assurance that, that God was really going to be with him. And so 
he can, instead of saying, okay, all right, you're sending me, you're going to be with me. That's great. Let's go. Nope. Instead, he asks him another question. He has a little more hesitancy. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell him? This is an amazing statement that then comes next. God said to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Here we have the introduction of God's name. He is the name above all names. I am has sent me to you. We have this amazing and bold statement, this declaration that it is the God of all the universe, the God who created everything, who is sending Moses to the Israelites. It's not some false God, some low power God in Egypt. No, this is God himself, the I am, the one who always was, always is, and always will be. It's an amazing statement that that phrase for God's name, I am who I am, indicating that he is who he says he is. He is God. We need to believe in him. We need to have assurance in who he is, that he is who he says he is. As it says in Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is God, and he is sending us to do many different things, just like Moses here. So many times in our lives, we should just, instead of questioning God, take assurance in the fact that he is truly who he says he is. How then are we going to respond? Here we see that God goes even further and says, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Again, reinforcing his name. He goes even further than to just say, I am who I am. Trust me, I am who I say I am. I am. I've always existed and always will. He goes beyond that and says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Reminding Moses of all the stories he'd probably already heard passed on from generation to generation of the amazing things that God did. How he made the Abrahamic covenant with Abraham and passed it down to Isaac and to Jacob. And then all the way down now to Moses here, he is uh, reminding him of his faithfulness in the past so that Moses can be reminded of the faithfulness of God in the present while also showing that it is going to be something that we can re remember constantly of God's faithfulness in the future because it says, this is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. So as God is calling Moses to do something extraordinary to step out beyond his comfort zone far beyond his comfort zone and to do something unbelievable he's not just sending him out there and going yep i'll be with you he's reminding him who he is he's promising that he is faithful and he will always be faithful that he's always going to be with his people and help them and we can take assurance and confidence in that this christmas season as we think about christmas and we think about god sending his own son as a baby to become a man who would die for our sins as fully God and fully man to do something we could not do. We can take assurance that God is fulfilling his promise today just as he did in the past. He's continued to be with us. He's continued to be the great I am. He's continued to be the faithful God. And so we have an opportunity this Christmas season, just like Moses did, to respond to God, to respond to God's faithfulness, to take confidence in it and take assurance in it, but then to move forward in confidence. When God tells us to go, then we should go. When God tells us to do something, we need to do it. We need to be ready to respond because often God asks us to do things in crazy situations, in crazy circumstances, out of the blue, something we didn't see coming. Uh, look at the story of Moses here and, and look at the story of this burning bush. Moses didn't go and see this burning bush expecting to see it. This wasn't something that he, oh, yep, today I'm going to go and God's going to call me to save an entire nation and to oppose the most powerful king on the planet. He didn't think that at all. He was shepherding. He was doing his normal everyday things. And that's the same with you and I on a daily basis. We're not going on our daily routine, at least most of us, we're not going, oh, God's going to call me to do something amazing and extraordinary and crazy today. He's going to push me outside my comfort zones and something great and amazing and scary is going to happen. No, that's not something we usually do. We're just going about our everyday business. But if we look to God and we are ready and willing to do what God wants us to do, and we are confident, not in ourselves, but in who God is, in the great I am, then we can do the things God has called us to do as we follow him and as we rely on his strength, not our own. So I want to encourage you with that this week. And then 
look forward to next week as we continue on and finish this story in Exodus chapter 3 and see what happens or what is going to happen in the next verses. So join us next time for another episode from the beginning here on Heavenward Thinking.